All right, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me again. We're continuing in our series, The Lies of the Emergent Church. This is one of the biggest lies that this false church spews from the pulpits just about every week. It's called the prosperity gospel lie. Uh, some people call them name it and claim it. You know, you see this by all those blasphemous televangelists. Let me tell you, anybody on Daystar or TBN or Quote the God channel or the church channel, anybody on those uh, you know, stations, all these televangelists are from the pit of hell. To be on one of those stations, you must be of the devil. You have to succumb to the devil's wants, needs, etc. So don't believe anybody that's on one of those stations. So don't believe the name it and claim it. And then you also hear from these devils that are in the main street churches, if you're struggling financially, then you have not got the victory. Or God didn't create you to be average or poor. I've heard another one many times. Poverty, they say, is a curse by the devil. My Lord, how wrong can they be? And then they say, believe it and receive it. You know, name it and claim it. Believe it and receive it. This is also called the word of faith gospel. Uh, you name it, you claim it. You know, God wants to prosper you in everything. Now listen, this is true, but not the way they say it, okay? And we're going to go through Bible verse after Bible verse after Bible verse. We're going to keep this under 15 minutes, and we're going to blow this false teaching right out of the water. Amen? Another uh, wicked false doctrine that tickles the ears of the lost is the American gospel agreed. And I put that in quotes because this has hit the poorest countries in the world, like Kenya and Bangladesh and Uganda and Zimbabwe. You have these churches that are preaching prosperity. You know, if you have enough faith, you're going to be rich. You know, physically rich. With money. It's, it's just amazing. It's also called the health, wealth, and prosperity gospel. So, uh, we're going to just talk about the wealth and prosperity part of it today. I'll get into the health gospel, the false health gospel, uh, tomorrow. Okay, so this is the main, what the Main Street Church says. And the reason they do that is because there's sinners in the pews. There's hellbound sinners in the pews. And they're wallowing in sin and of the world. And they want something to give them comfort and entertain them. So uh, the pastor, quote pastor on the pulpit, lies to them. Let's see what the Word of God says. Luke 9. Listen carefully. This is going to be almost all Bible verses from here on out. Luke 9, 57 and 62 says, And it came to pass that, as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee with whatsoever thou go. I'll go wherever you want to, Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Foxes have holes, and birds of the airs have nests, homes. But the Son of Man does not have any place to lay his head. And you guys are talking about blessings, and name it, and claim it, and receive it, and hundredfold, and two hundred. And come on! And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first. Let me go first to bury my father. He wanted to go to his own father's funeral. What did Jesus say to him? Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me go bid them farewell, which they are at my house. Jesus says, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus is speaking to you right now. Would you forsake your mother's or your father's funeral, if that's what it came down to, to be on the mission field? Or would you take the first flight home to bury him? You devils! This is the um, obedience God is calling you to be, not a name it and claim it, health, wealth, and prosperity gospel. He's telling this man, if you want to follow me, you must forsake everything, including your earthly family. Does that mean you can't go to a funeral? I didn't say that. But read God's words again. This is in red. This is in the Bible. Doesn't matter if it's in red or not anyway. Every word is God breathed. Amen. Another wicked false doctrine that um, tickles the lost is they believe that the more faith you have, the more prosperity you will have. Well, wait a minute. You can't become prosperous in a country like Uganda or Ethiopia or Zimbabwe unless you become a wicked devil and steal from the poor. So because those people were born there, they were born less blessed than somebody in America, one of the most wicked countries in the world? No, 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 no. Listen, there's equality with Jesus. Those that have extra other than food and raiment and maybe a little shelter over the head, better get to those. 21,000 children that are dying every day due to man-made poverty or 9,000 adults. 30,000 people every day um, die because you don't give enough. 
Oh, you false Christians are going straight to hell. Listen, 2 Corinthians 8, 14 and 15. But by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want that their abundance also may, abase, may be a supply for your want. If you're in need, then others should take care of you. That there may be equality. There's equality in the house of the Lord. Don't think this is socialism. This is God's true word. As it is written in Exodus 16, 18, he that has gathered much had nothing left over. You're not supposed to store up your treasures on earth. And he that has gathered little had no lack. You people are going on vacations and seeing a false ark in Kentucky and going, Bible Museum, hundreds of dollars here, hundreds of dollars there, and 21,000 children are dying daily. What would Jesus do? Feed those children? The false church does not want to hear these truths. Please note the following verse was spoken to disciples, not the rich man. Don't use the rich man excuse. Luke 12, 33 to 44 says, Sell what you have and give alms. Give to the poor. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not. Where there is no thief that can approach, neither does corrupt. For where your treasure is, Christian, your heart will be also. Does your church preach these above truths? To sell all your non-necessities uh, and give to the poor. To not go on those wicked cruises. To not go to the filthy Disney world and entertain your flesh. But to train your child up in the way he should go. So he will not depart from it. To not send your child to the wicked public schools of this world. You're damned to hell if you send your child to a public school. There are very few exceptions. Maybe a single mother that's struggling. But boy, the body of Christ should help her. The wolves in the pulpit won't tell you these truths below. Listen, Acts 2, 44 to 45. And all that received, uh, excuse me, all that believed were together, the Christians. And they had all things in common. They never claimed, this is my car, this is my house, this is, this is, that is that. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. But not you, quote Christian. You're going to name and claim it. You're going to receive the blessings while the whole rest of the world starves. Why, the 21,000 children under the age of five years old die in their mother's hands in Kenya and, and Asia, Africa, wherever. Right? You don't care about them, though. You gotta, It's not your fault, right? The Bible com uh, condemns you. This is the inspired word of God, is it not? What do you own? Acts 4.32 And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. And not one was saying that anything of the things he has was his own. But they had all things in common. Is that what your church preaches? If these commands were spoken in the quote church, the entire place would clear out. I will challenge anybody. I'll come in front of your church and I'll preach the true gospel. Any pastor out there that's a word of faith, a false pastor, I will come and preach in front of your congregation and I will debate you in front of your congregation and we'll preach the true word of God. You'll lose every one of your members because you're a wicked devil, a sinning devil. Acts 4, 34 and 35, neither were any of them that lacked. Amen? For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them. And bought the prices of things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according to as he had need. Not telling you to sell your last possession like your modest house, but if you have a house with three bedrooms with only a husband and wife, then sell it and go to a small mobile home or an RV. If you have food in the fridge and a roof over your head and a few dollars in your pocket, you are rich. Matthew 19, 23 to 24, then he said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You have to understand this, people. Listen to the words of Jesus throughout the Bible and the Old Testament and the New. There's over 2,000 verses about how we ought to take care of the poor, the downtrodden, and how we ought to use the money he blesses us with. I'm not telling you to quit your job and sell every last possession you have and live on the side of the road in a cardboard box. I am telling you to take uh, account of what you have. And if it's more than what you just need to keep the rain out or the snow and, and, and more than just to fill your belly every day, sell it. Downsize your home. Move inland if you're, quote, retired and, and uh, uh, hopefully preach full time. True Christians are called to suffer tribulation now. This isn't a life of your best life now. Listen, 1 Thessalonians 3, 4, For verily, verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should 
suffer tribulation, even as it comes to pass. And as you know, if you're not hated by the world, if you're not hated by these professing pew-sitting Christians that are living in sin, then you're not with Jesus. Listen, quote, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you're not hated by your own family, that's not safe. If you're not hated by the world, then you're not with Christ. Listen, Second uh, Timothy 3, 10 through 13. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecution, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions endured. But out of them the Lord delivered me. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Do you? But evil men which are mostly saved sinners, and seducers, the false ministers in these false church pulpits, shall wax worse, deceiving and being deceived. These false teachers are, are sending you straight to hell because you're still in sin and you believe their false gospel and they're just paving the way to hell uh, while you have a smile on your face. It's amazing. If you partake, uh, excuse me, you ought to partake in Christ's suffering. Not to live your best life now, heresy. Listen, 1 Peter 4, 12 through 14. Beloved, think that it's not strange concerning the fiery trial, which means severe persecution, which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you shall be glad also with exceeding joy. If we suffer... We shall also reign with him. If we deny him like you pew sitters do and you false teachers do, you deny him. Amen? You're tolerant. You don't preach the gospel to anybody. You don't call your family and your, quote, friends out of sin. You're yoking with sinners. Shame on you. You ought to be content with food and raiment. Clothing. Food and clothing, you're to be content. That's what the Bible says. Don't believe me. 1 Timothy 6, 5-10. Perverse disputings of men corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Listen closely. Supposing that godliness is great gain. Did you hear that? Supposing that gain, material things, is godliness. It's insanity. From such, the Bible says, withdraw yourselves. Do not eat with them. Do not sit with them. They're wolves. But godliness with contentment is great gain hallelujah for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can bring nothing out and having food and clothing let us be content you people aren't content you're trying to live the american dream hey listen there's nothing wrong with wanting to make more money but if it's to go on that wicked trip across country or overseas if it's to go to wicked disney world if it's to go to see a wooden ark or a bible museum up in washington dc you're wicked if it's wanting to make more money and you don't have to sacrifice any of your faith and you're going to give that money to the poor other than what you need to keep the rain out and to have food in your stomach. Yeah, you can have a few months maybe left over in case a rainy day, in case you lose your job. But if you got a $500,000 401k, I'd be trembling. But they, verse 9, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition which is hell for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith did you hear that they were in the faith now they erred from the faith and what happened to them they pierced themselves through with many sorrows heading straight to hell you must have Pure, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. You must have pure and undefiled religion to get into the kingdom of God. And everybody likes the first part of James 1.27, although most don't obey it. But you must have um, moral, um, you must be morally unblemished. Amen. Listen, and you must keep yourself unspotted, which means sin free from the world listen james 1 27 says pure religion and undefiled before god and the father is this to visit the orphan and the widow in their affliction there's the command you must take care of the orphan order you don't have to necessarily physically go visit them in kenya or uganda or ethiopia or bangla wherever china but you have to support those that do so that's the first part but nobody wants to read the second part because you're 
in these false churches that tell you that you're saved in sin, it's wicked. Listen, and to keep yourself unspotted. That word unspotted means sin free, unblemished morally from the world. To keep yourself unspotted from the world. The neighbor and claim it, the prosperity, the emergent church gospel, the word of faith gospel, they're all the same. They have crept into 99 plus percent of the churches today. And if you're believing this gospel, I pray, false gospel, I pray you come out of it. I could have put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more verses here. I'm going to end it here to keep it as short as I can. But I plead with you, if you're believing these wolves, if you haven't sacrificed every ounce of yourself to God, if you haven't crucified yourself with uh, Christ and, and living the afflicted life that he did, read Isaiah 53. If you're not living that life, then you're not with Christ. If you're not hated by the world, especially the professing Christians that are sitting in these false pews, then you are not with Christ. It promises you that in the Bible. Amen? Thank you for listening. To Jesus be all the glory. Don't forget, he's not your Savior, but he's Lord, and you must obey him till the end to be saved.